Man, oh man, I do have a farmer's tan. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. I actually wasn't planning on making any videos today. Uh, I was gonna just take a day off and help my wife out here. We're spraying uh, sumacs all around our property, trying to get control on them and get, you know, take back some of our fields and stuff. But anyways, I'm over here at the farm working and doing things and I thought, you know, after the news that I saw before I came over, I have got to tell you guys about this because if I don't do it, you probably won't know about it unless you're looking at the same news sites that I'm looking at, which the majority of these stories uh, came from the Gateway Pundit. Uh, but you're not gonna hear about this on the mainstream news. So uh, first off here, residents were evacuated after a natural gas pipeline explosion in Wallace, Texas on July 10th. So that's today. The thing blew up for no reason. And I mean, think about it. In recent history, do you he ever remember hearing about a natural gas pipeline just suddenly blowing up on its own? No, of course not, because they're one of the safest, most efficient, cheapest ways to transport uh, oil and natural gas across the United States. Acro around the world, they use pipelines. And the only time they blow up is if somebody screwed up big time or if somebody else uh, with nefarious intentions went out there and actually did something. So. It's too early to tell right now. There's going to be an investigation going on. They had to evacuate a whole bunch of residents from that town, Wallace, Texas. I mean, so again, when you add this in, if you just looked at this by itself, you might not think much about it. But when you look at everything else that's been going on with these food manufacturing process plants dropping like flies, bursting into flames, planes crashing into them. I mean, weird, weird stuff going on. Uh, just last week, there was, I can't remember how many thousands or tens of thousands of hogs were killed by this one employee that just decided to neglect them. Uh, there was the whole deal with the, with the thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of cattle that died up in Kansas, supposedly from the heat. So there's a a lot of unanswered questions going on and the weirdest thing is nobody uh, in the Justice Department and Biden's Justice Department is even worried about it or even talking about it so I feel it's my duty to tell you guys about this stuff when I see it and so that we can just be aware of it I'm not trying to scare anybody but you need to be aware of this stuff they're constantly attacking our everything our infrastructure our, our ability to feed ourselves things like that are in it seems like they're under constant attack either that or like i said a couple of videos ago it's just an act of god maybe this is the preamble to you know the apocalypse or something i don't know what in the hell's going on but things ain't looking good anywhere in the united states in one of my other videos recently i mentioned the fact that they're shutting down several uh, aluminum and steel manufacturing plants around the country you know why because they've tripled their utility bills the prices to, to make this stuff has tripled for these people so they have to shut down the business it's not a viable option anymore for them so we're going to see more and more of this as the pinch comes on to our natural gas and other vital resources that travel through pipelines uh, i think this is a terrorist attack myself that's my gut feeling on this so if that's not bad enough Authorities respond to massive fire after explosion at Oklahoma natural gas plant uh, and that was it happened on July 9th. So yesterday uh, natural gas facility. I mean a big facility looking at the pictures. Uh, it just exploded and again. Maybe it happened on accident. Maybe it was an act of God. Maybe it was an act of terrorism. I think responsible thinking people would be trying to do investigations to figure it out. And I'm sure the people that are on the ground at these locations are trying to really figure out what happened, but it just seems really weird, guys. I mean, everything that's going on uh, leads me to believe that we need to stock up like there is no tomorrow because at some point things are just gonna stop they're just going to cease to work anymore. You won't have natural gas. You won't have, you know, gasoline for your car or, or oil or anything, you know? So, I mean, this is just catastrophic. You better be prepared for the collapse of the entire grid because that's what seems like is coming. That's when I look at all the news, when I, when I read the tea leaves, that's what's telling me is stock up. Like there may not be a future, uh, commerce section here in the United States. I mean, we may have to go to 100% bartering and that's gonna be among people that you know and trust. So uh, anyways, to a couple of other stories here, I just wanted to tell you just to kind of point out the continued deterioration of our, of our country here under the leadership of Joe Biden and the communist Democrats that are in charge right now. So this is out of California. So a California woman throws gasoline on a man and sets him on fire during an argument at the park. Now, the weird thing was, I watched the little short video clip that they had of this, and it looked like this guy was just sitting down kind of like I am. Kinda, it looked like he was minding his own business looking at his phone or something like that, right? And then suddenly, this big boned woman comes walking up out of nowhere, 
and she has a can of something and she pours it all over him and the guy you can see him go like this like what the hell was that about so I don't know if these people were like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know, brother, sister, mother, son, whatever. I don't know what the deal was, but this woman came up out of nowhere and poured gasoline on this guy. And then you can see her lighting a lighter, trying to get it to go near him. And he's like, I don't know why, for whatever reason, the guy didn't run away. He should have ran away, but he didn't run away. And eventually she puts it right up to him and lights him on fire. The guy burst into flame. I don't know if he died or what, but just looking at the, the fireball that came off that guy's head and face, if he lives, he's going to be in excruciating pain. And I'm, we're talking third degree burns. He may die from it. I mean, it's just terrible, terrible stuff. I've been burned real badly. One time I had a motorcycle wreck years ago. And the motorcycle, after I was all done sliding and banging around and all that stuff, a car pulled out in front of me and, and basically I collided with it. And they didn't see me, it wasn't really her fault. Now it was an old woman. She probably you know, shouldn't have been driving at that point. I don't know, I'm not gonna make that judgment call, but uh, point of fact is, is I had a wreck. And once I got done sliding 70 something feet along the blacktop, and I was like, I realized I was okay. I look down and I hear a sizzling sound and I look down and they're right, right on your belt line. That's where my motorcycle landed and the hot exhaust pipe was laying right on top of my tender skin just cooking me. And so luckily I had enough strength to push that big heavy bike off of me and get over to the side of the road where there were a whole bunch of people that helped me out. But anyways, I mean, can you imagine just the pain that that, that person must, have, must be going through if they survived at all? I mean, this is just a great example of the deterioration of our country, our laws, our everything, civility. They're breaking down civility between human beings and that is very dangerous. So. Another one out of California, there were these kids. I don't know who this guy was, but he was a citizen journalist. And you know, God bless him for going out and telling this story because no one else in the media is gonna tell it. He comes and shows up at a school bus stop in California, and guess what? It's right in an open drug market where there's homeless people lining up and down the streets and like tent cities and stuff like this, like Skid Row, right? I mean, that's a terrible, terrible oversight by the school board to be dropping these young children off. So that's the kind of stuff we got going on here in our country is we've got kids, children, America's children, the future of America being dropped off in open drug markets. How do you think that's gonna end? I mean, just unbelievable. Parents, you need to step up and protect your children. Don't let the system uh, indoctrinate and steal them away from you. Teach them the difference between right and wrong, you know, morality. Uh, Christianity would be even better. Uh, the Ten Commandments, things like that. These are important things that keep society, it's the glue that holds society together. Without these things, people get burned up and, you know, get set on fire and just different atrocious attacks like this that you just wouldn't believe. I heard about a guy last week, an old, I believe it was an Asian man, uh, three or four black guys grabbed a traffic cone and beat this guy to death. I mean, we're talking about some serious stuff. Up in, I believe it was New York, uh, uh, a convenience store owner or a grocery store, small little grocery store owner or liquor store or something like that. Uh, he all of a sudden this guy jumps over the counter, a black guy jumps over the counter. And I believe the convenience store owner was, was either Hispanic or Asian. I'm not sure, but he jumps over the counter and starts attacking this guy and pushing him, shoving him real hard into the, into the wall. And he's going to rob the place, right? Well, the, the store owner grabs a screwdriver or something, a knife or something off the shelf there that he had probably for self-defensive purposes. And he stabbed this guy several times in the neck. It killed him. Well, the DA in New York arrested the store owner for self-defense purposes. I mean, all he was doing was trying to defend his store and his self and his, and he, I'm sure he believed he was in, you know, he was in fear for his life basically. So he had no choice but defend, to defend himself. And this scumbag Soros appointed DA is trying to prosecute this guy. Now I heard that he's finally out on bail, but they set the bail way high at first. And then finally there was enough backlash that they reduced the bail down. But the point is this guy shouldn't be in jail at all. He should be hailed as a hero of the neighborhood. Instead, who's running his store now? I don't know. Unbelievable, unbelievable how they can control your life like this. Uh, the last story I want to talk about, it's kind of a good one in a way. Uh, so in New Mexico, it's a mama bear story. This woman was doing something. I don't know exactly what happened, if she was in traffic or what, but somebody came up and carjacked her. Another woman came up and carjacked her, right? And what the woman didn't know, or maybe she did know, was that this lady's kids, two kids, I believe, were in the back of the car. 
And so she gets on the phone, frantically calls 911, and is like, oh my God, my car's been carjacked and my kids are in the back of the car. Well, she had enough time to become a superhero. And she ran out there and jumped on the hood of that car, not re you know, disregarding her own safety and her own life. And this person that was driving the car was openly trying to fling her off the car like in the movies and shit. So, I mean, this woman has some, some bad injuries and stuff. But at the end, the woman that was trying to carjack the car ended up running and hiding behind a camper or something. The police ended up getting her. And, you know, I must admit, it gave me some satisfaction seeing that woman uh, getting a cop, big old cop's knee put in her back and getting put down on the ground and put in handcuffs, cuffed and stuffed, right? Because that's what's supposed to happen in the justice system. You're not supposed to be allowed to just walk over and steal someone else's property with their freaking kids inside. Let me know down in the comments, if that was one of your kids in the car, would you have done the same thing? Would you have been brave enough to jump on that car and just regardless of what might happen to you? Because let me tell you something, if the answer is yes, that separates you from about 90% of the Americans that are out there among, amongst our population here. Most of these people, I mean, like the Uvalde thing, guys, I mean, we saw this. These cops could have gone in and stopped this guy much sooner than they did. But for whatever reason, either for orders on high or their own cowardice or just panicking and freaking out, not having the right training to do the job properly, they froze and lives were lost because of their failure to act. So, uh, you know, you want to be smart about it, obviously, and not get yourself into some deadly situation that you cannot possibly escape from. But I guarantee freaking to you. If my kid, now my kid's grown now, but if my kid was little and somebody tried to do that to me, I'd not only be climbing up on the car, I'd be kicking the windshield in, climbing through the side windows because I don't give a F at that point. If you're messing with getting between me and my kid, uh, somebody's going to die. That's the point. And anyways, guys, uh, Hopefully that was a little bit of a positive story. Everything ended well. The mama got her kids back. Everything was fine. Uh, she had some injuries, had to go to the hospital, but they weren't life-threatening, so I think she's gonna be all right. And what a badass story. What a badass story. That woman, I wish she'd have been there at Uvalde. If that would have happened, probably a lot less kids would have died that day. So be brave, guys, but be smart about things. And I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, sorry to have to lay all this bad news on you all the time, but man, that's all that comes out these days. So I tell it like it is. I calls it like I see it, as they used to say. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, sticking with the channel. Uh, as I've said before, our family motto is keep moving and always keep moving. Even when you feel like uh, you know, you're not getting ahead, you're not gonna be able to beat this thing. You gotta keep moving, keep putting one foot in front of the other, keep a positive attitude as much as you can. We are gonna get through this thing. What it's gonna take is a mass awakening of American people to wake up out of their comas and realize that we're being overthrown by globalist communists that want to destroy everything good about the United States of America. And I ain't gonna be quiet about it. I'm gonna be a squeaky wheel. As for always, I stand for liberty. I hope you do too. We'll see you next time.